Hi guys, welcome back to Top Speed Golf. In this video, I'm gonna still tackle one of the biggest problems out there. I see time and time again, most of the players that I see that come in through the website or individual lessons, they're struggling losing this club, the lag a little bit early, they're flipping as they're coming through contact, and they're really not compressing that golf ball and getting that nice solid strike like we all wanna have. So this video, I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail about in the Top Speed Golf system, when is the flip? So what, how do we know if we have a flip? Where should we be looking to see if we're releasing into the straight line release position and really getting that compressed golf ball where you feel like that ball smashes against the face and is almost stuck to the club for a good five or six inches coming through contact. Now I know that's not the reality of what's happening, but that should be the feeling you're getting if you're really compressing the golf ball. So first let's go over where is the flip coming from and vice versa with that, where should it be? Where should the club be releasing? We are releasing the club and where should the feeling be different? So it's okay to say stop using the right arm, but what do we need to do differently to actually make that happen for a good release? So first let's start out with what the flip is. So as we start our downswing, the flip comes from the right shoulder and the right hand, the right arm kind of pushing this club. You're gonna feel like your thumb and your forefinger are really tight. These muscles on the bottom of your arm are really contracting to flip that club through there. So as these contract, that brings your hand back, this part of your hand down, your thumb goes out and that pushes this club out away from your body. So I have my flight scope set up here. We're gonna go ahead and make a swing and let's see about how much distance I get. I'm really gonna try to hit hard with my right side and hit it as hard as I can, but we're gonna see if I can flip on this one. Let's try it out here. It's really hard for me to do. I'm just not used to pushing with my right side as much. Um, it's something that I used to do. Hit that one in the water, so that's probably a good, good reason not to flip. And let's see what my distance was. My carry distance was 130 yards with a, an eight iron here with 82 miles an hour of club head speed. So my, my club head speed was still pretty high. I'm, I'm hitting the ball hard. I'm swinging really hard at it, but I'm just not getting very much distance on it. So we talked about how the right shoulder and the right arm are pushing. So if I'm hitting a flip, let's get a ball up here. If I'm, if I'm making a flip, my right shoulder's coming out a lot of times this is an over the top move sometimes. My lower right arm is, is flexing, pushing the club out. My thumb and my forefinger are pushing against the club. And you're gonna feel really tight up in here too just because your whole forearm is tight pushing that club. So that's the first piece. Now what do we need to replace that with? I need to feel like my forearm is really nice and loose and relaxed. I need to feel like my thumb and my forefinger are nice and relaxed as I'm coming down. I wanna feel at the same time that my club is shallowing out like we talk about in the move in the system. I break down exactly how pros are shallowing this club out and getting a lot more lag. So as I start to get some lag, as I shallow that out, that looks really steep. That's what the pros are doing and it's what we call the move. It separates most of the players out there from the top pros. And then from there, we have to come through impact a little bit differently. So this is what we call the flat spot or impact glide. I wanna get that club to really glide through the ball and to release out in front of the ball. So if I'm flipping, I'm gonna go ahead and choke up on this club. Where is my club very first bisecting my arms? We're gonna see somewhere down here around the ball. If I'm doing this correctly, what's happening is I'm getting this lag like we talked about, and as I start to come through the ball, my left leg is pushing down and out into the ground. That's gonna rotate my hip up and out. That's gonna rotate my shoulder up and out as I kinda of come around a circle here. And then my hand is naturally gonna to start to come up and that's gonna allow this club to release out in front. So as my hand, let's imagine my hand is attached here. As I'm pulling this way with my left hand, as my left hand is naturally posting up, that club is gonna to wanna to accelerate to catch up to that. And it's gonna be fully released, if I do the same thing there again, fully released as we're in this straight line release position. So that's gonna be the first time that this club bisects my hands. Prior to that, I'm on the way to fully releasing. So as I'm coming through contact, I am in the act of releasing the club, but I'm getting rid of this right arm push and I'm adding this left hand moving up and out to get that club to whip on through there. A great way to feel this is if I just take a club with my left hand only, again, I'm gonna push with my left leg and I'm gonna let that accelerate. And I'm gonna let this club feel like it's really long as I'm coming through. So I got lag and I'm letting that go really long on through the shot. So I'm getting some good speed as I'm doing that. I want you to do about 100 reps really soft with the right hand, getting that nice angle of lag, and then feeling like as you're coming through contact, the butt end of this club is turning up. That's what's gonna get you that impact glide. So we got forward shaft lean. 
as the butt end of the club turns up, the club head moves down level with the ground. So I mentioned earlier in this video, if you want to get that ball to really be compressed, you're going to feel like you're making contact. That club is sliding through the ground. This is when the, club, the ball is going to feel like it's compressed against the club for those five or six inches. That's the feeling that you're going to get. It's like this ball is just stuck to this club face all the way on through contact as the hand turns on up. So that's the feeling we're going to get. After we get this right arm relaxed, we're going to go ahead and make some swings doing that. And then we're going to take the left arm, post up and get these good full follow through swings as we're coming on through there. After we're comfortable with those moves individually, right arms relaxed, we're making some swings here, getting some lag, releasing out in front. We can go ahead and just do it just with the right arm only. Then we're going to do the left arm like we went over. Once I get comfortable with that left arm, now I'm going to put both hands together. And it's going to be so much easier to get lag and to really let that lag release out in front. Now I'm going to check it on video to make sure when is my club very first bisecting my arms. So if I'm here, that club's bisecting my arms, I'm too early. I want to get to that straight line release position where I have lag and I'm letting that release. Again, that's because my, my hand is pulling up, getting that to release on out in front. If you do that, the club's going to glide through impact, really compress that golf ball. Sorry, my flight scope here timed out. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a break, let this turn back on, and I'll show you with about the same club head speed or a little bit more how much farther I can hit it with some good lag and compression. All right, guys, so let's try it out again. My flight scope is, is cooled down here a little bit, pretty hot here today in Florida. I'm going to get rid of that right arm push. I'm going to let this right arm be nice and relaxed. The bottom of my forearm is going to be relaxed. As I'm coming through, what I'm going to focus on is having good lag and then getting that grip into the club to turn back up to really get this to accelerate on through there. So it's not your strength. I know you guys, you see these small, you know, kind of players that don't have anywhere near the strength that you have getting way more distance. It's all in our technique. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go ahead and try to hit a good firm eight iron and let's see how my speed and distance improve as I do this. There you go, just a little bit thin. Not too bad though. We'll see what the speed and the distance did. So the last one was 126 and only I think 82 miles an hour. That was 98 miles an hour club head speed and 164 total distance. So you can see from 120s to 160s just changing my technique. I probably tried a little bit harder in the first one where I was really pushing hard with my right arm. That was actually an easier swing than I took on the second one, but I used the leverage of that club. So it's not your strength. I believe in you guys. You guys can do this. Good luck. I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. Hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a fantastic bonus video for you, an entire bonus series. Now, all the pros out there, the longest hitters in the world, they're getting a lot of lag, and they're releasing that lag to generate club head speed. I got a video that's going to show you your number one lag mistake, one of the most common ones that I see. You're going to get instant access to that when you click the link that pops up on your screen for those of you that are on a desktop device. For those of you that are on a mobile phone, a tablet, an Android, go ahead and click the iCard up on your screen or down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that video plus five videos for my top speed golf system which are going to go over the five most important pieces of the swing to get power, to get accuracy, and to start beating the heck out of your friends. So good luck to you guys and I'll see you all in a lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.